Hi, I'm the Calculus Professor, and today we'll be talking about definite integrals. In problem number 51, we'd like to use the definition of the definite integral to find the definite integral from 1 to 4 of x squared minus 1 dx. All right, so if we're going to use the definition of the definite integral, then we're actually going to take a limit of a sum in some sense. So what I want to do is first let's just write down uh, a Riemann sum. If I'm re using a Riemann sum and I'm going to use a limit to take this definite integral, then I'm going to want to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of f of a plus um, k delta x's times delta x, where uh, delta x is something fixed in this case. All right, so here is the limit that I need to take to evaluate this limit once I know what all the pieces of this puzzle are. Well, the first piece of this puzzle is delta x. It shows up several times, and I need to know what delta x is. Well, delta x, we know, is b minus a over n. All right? So it's the n points, or the length of the segment, divided by the number of pieces I'm breaking this thing up into. Well, b in this case, that's the top number, a, the bottom number. So it's 4 minus 1 over n. In other words, it's 3 over n. So we know what delta x is. Uh, do we know anything else? Yeah, we know what a is. a, in this case, is 1. Okay, so let's plug some things into this limit and rewrite it a little bit. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of f of a, but now we know a is 1, plus k delta x plus k delta x, but we just figured out that delta x is 3 over n. So it's k times 3 over n times delta x, which is 3 over n. All right, so this is where we're at right now. Now I want to say, well, what do I mean by f of 1 plus k times 3 over n? What I mean is take this and plug it into the function. But what is the function in this case? It's x squared minus 1. So I want to take all of this, 1 plus k times 3 over n, and plug it in to this function, x squared minus 1. So I'll do that, and I get the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of, okay, I take this and I plug it in here. That means I square it and then subtract 1. So I'm going to square this, 1 plus I could write uh, k times 3 over n as 3k over n. So 1 plus 3k over n, quantity squared, minus 1. Put that all in parentheses. So that's f of 1 plus k times 3 over n is I square it and I subtract 1 from it, times 3 over n. Let's simplify that a little bit. Let's expand this piece. I still have to subtract 1. Uh, so if I expand this, I still have limit as n goes to infinity of the sum k going from 1 to n of. OK, if I square this, I get 1 squared, which is 1. I get 2 times the first times the second, which is 6k over n. And then I get the second one squared, which is plus 9k squared over n squared. 
and then I want to subtract 1 and then multiply by 3 over n. So I just squared this out, wrote it here, the minus 1's here, the 3n is here. Now you see I've got a positive 1, I've got a negative 1, those cancel. So we could rewrite, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of some k going from 1 to n of, well, I've got this guy plus this guy times 3 over n. So let's go ahead and multiply through by my 3 over n. And if I do here, 3 times 6 is 18k over n squared. And then again, if I multiply through by 3 over n, 9 times 3 is 27k squared over n cubed. Okay, now I've got the sum of these guys plus the sum of these guys. So I could write, I can distribute this sum and I can rewrite it this way. This is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, I'll write this in a bracket, it's the sum k going from 1 to n of 18k over n squared. Here, I get plus the sum k going from 1 to n of 27k squared over n cubed. I'll move back over here. And notice that in this sum, the thing that is changing is k. n is a constant, so n squared is a constant. And constants can move through sums. So 18 is a constant, n squared is a constant. So I'll move the 18 over n squared outside of the sum. And when I do, I get the following. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, I move the 18 over n squared outside of the sum, and what I have inside of the sum is I just have sum k going from 1 to n of just k. Over here, uh, 27 is a constant, it can move through the sum. n cubed is a constant, it can move through the sum, so I have plus... 27 over n cubed uh, times the sum uh, k going from 1 to n of k squared. All right, now we need to have a little bit of knowledge about our sums of the first n k's and the sum of the first n squares. Uh, and what we get is the limit as n goes to infinity of 18 over n squared. But the sum of the first n integers is n times n plus 1 over 2. So we multiply this by n times n plus 1 over 2, which is what is the sum of the first n integers. Plus, we have 27 over n cubed times the sum of the first n squares. But the sum of the first n squares is something like this. k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6. Now I can put my n bracket on there. Okay? So now we want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy and the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy. Um, oh, I made a mistake here. I wrote k's in here. That's very bad. These are n's. My apologies. So it's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. That's much better, and it actually makes some sort of sense, right? <laughs> okay, so um, let's look at this limit as n goes to infinity. Notice on top, 
if I were to multiply everything out, I have an n squared. And what would be the coefficient on the n squared term? Well, it would be 18. On bottom, I have an n squared. What would be the coefficient on the n squared term? A 2. So I have 18 n squared over 2 n squared as n goes to infinity. And I know that as n goes to infinity, if the power of n on top and bottom is the same, I just take the coefficients out in front of the highest powers of n. So in this case, it's 18 on top, 2 on the bottom. So the limit of this first guy is just 18 halves, or 9. Okay. What about this second guy? If I were to multiply this all out, I've got n times n times 2n times 27. So I've got an n cubed on top, and the coefficient would be, what, 54. On bottom, I have an n cubed times 6. So if I took the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing, then I'd get on top a 54, and on bottom a 6. So 54 over 6. Uh, well, 18 over 2 is otherwise known as 9. Uh, 54 over 6 is otherwise known as 9. So we get 9 plus 9, which is 18. And so we did a bunch of work here, but what were we actually trying to do? We were trying to take the definite integral using the definition of the definite integral. And we went through all this work, we went through all this work, and we got down to 18. In other words, the definite integral that we started with uh, comes out to being 18.